In this video, uh, we'll be looking at using the Hungarian algorithm in a, uh, for a minimize uh, when we're minimizing, but there is a dummy row or column required. Now, when do you need a dummy row or column? Well, let's have a look. We've got cricket, water polo, water polo and volleyball, and we have bus one, two, three, and four. So as we can see, we've got more buses than we do sports. So we always need to have, when we're doing Hungarian algorithm, the number of rows equaling the number of columns. So in this case, we need to add what's known as a dummy row. So the number of columns must equal the number of rows in a cost matrix. Add, so here's our step one, add a dummy row or column so that it makes it square. So we can see here, we need to add our dummy, and I'm just gonna call this dummy here, zero, 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 like that. So now our matrix is square because we have four rows and four columns. Now, now that we've done that, we move on to our Hungarian algorithm process. Now remember, whatever bus gets allocated to the dummy is basically not allocated, but we need to make it square so everyone can be allocated. So what's our first step now? Well, we move on to the Hungarian algorithm. So I'm going to go through this faster because we have done these in the previous two videos. So we need to get the smallest entry in each row. Deduct away. And you may know, the dummy, ver the dummy row doesn't change. Next step is we do the Subtract, um, subtract the smallest entry in each column from the entries in each um, column. We can see what's the minimum for this one? Zero. The minimum for this one? Zero. This one? Zero. This one? Zero. So therefore, we've already done step two. It remains unchanged. Step three is to draw straight lines through the rows and columns so that all zero entries are covered. So using a line, what is the most number of zeros we can cover? Well, it's our dummy row. Our next step is to cover the next one. So I can see two here or two there. I'm going to draw it there. Our next one here and our next one there. So we've sort of covered all the all the lines there. So we've just done step three. Now step four says if the minimum number of covering lines is equal to the number of rows in each cost matrix, then go to step six. So the number of rows equal the number of lines. Let's have a look. We've got four rows and four lines, so they do. So we can move on to step six and ignore step five. Step six is Circle, uh, select and circle a zero entry in each column um, so that no other, um, no other circled zero entries are in its row. So cricket looks like the only optimum allocation for cricket is going to be here, right? So it's going to be bus four. Uh, we've got water polo, looks like the best allocation is to bus three. And because bus three is now used up, it can't also go to volleyball. So therefore, bus one will go to volleyball. And let's have a look at our buses. Bus one's used up, bus three's used up, and bus four's used up. Therefore, bus two's left over, so it's getting allocated to the dummy. So, we know that the dummy has bus two. So let's circle that. And a circle of a zero always looks a little bit unusual. There we go. So cricket is going to bus four, water polo to bus three, volleyball to bus one, and the dummy bus two is not allocated. So let's write that out. Cricket, water polo, and volleyball. Okay. And we write that out. And I'd, uh, <coughs> I'd make sure you write this. Go bus two is not allocated just for working. Okay. So Cricket. Now, just here, um, we're working, this is in minutes, okay? And yet again, I've just pulled down the, the total time and find the total time, okay? So, just a bit of a typo there, just copying from the last question. So, cricket is eight minutes, water polo is six, volleyball is eight, and bus no, the bus is not allocated to zero. We sum them up, eight. 16, 24 minutes in total, and that's to minimize the total time. 
In our next video, we're looking at maximizing um, and I hope you enjoy this one.